Hello and welcome back to the Life Writing Show. I'm your host, CJ, aka Mr. Life Writing. With me for this episode is Dr. Freya Huffman to talk about her entrepreneurial endeavors and more. Hey, Freya, how's it going? I am great. How about you? It's so great to see you again. Uh, it's, it's great to see you. I hesitated just then because I, I have an uncle who used to always say, a great uncle, it's, it's great to be seen. Hey, I like that. And we were like, oh, I like that and I'm going to use it. <laughs> yes, it's great to be seen. <laughs> That's right. So, Freya, you joined me about a year or so ago mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, a, a wealth of things from an entrepreneur uh, standpoint. I, I think I, I tend to call you one of those serial entrepreneurs. Yeah. <laughs> you, you just, you, you have, you not only have a lot going on, but you have a lot going on and you do it so well. It's like seamless. <laughs> and I'm like, how in the world does she manage all of that? But anyway, that's that's another segment in itself. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So let's let's jump in. And, um, you know, entrepreneurship uh, is another topic that I'm observing this month. Uh, in fact, entrepreneurship is one of those topics that I decided a few months ago to observe in some capacity throughout the year because I it's it. right it's just that yes. important. so many people are doing so many amazing things and mm -hmm. people we need to know about it and we need to keep it on our radars right so, so true entrepreneurship in itself Freya. Mm -hmm. I, I i i gotta hear this right here because I, I i don't think i ever posed this question to you how did the entrepreneurship bug get a hold of you in the first place yeah. So again, thanks so much for having me. So excited to be here. Um, you are my brother, my homie. We go so far back. Uh, sports, Absolutely. athletes, and and I want to say just that competitive spirit when we grew up playing sports. But let me back up a little bit more. When okay. we grew up, and I grew up in Magnolia Acres, we had a pecan tree. And that pecan tree, I was a little tomboy. I would climb up the tree. I would shake the pecans off it when I got on the roof. I would get one of those big pla plastic white um, bowls that we still use today. And I would get all the pecans and go take them to Mr. Bo Weevil. Ooh. And he used to sell cookies and we and he wanted bait. So we would dig bait because I wasn't scared of the baits back then. <laughs> and we would dig it and put it in a cup, take the pecans, sell it to him. And really, honestly, I really believe that's when my entrepreneurship journey started. Because as a young oh. kid, we wanted to go to the food factory. We wanted to buy the hamburger. The we wanted to play factory. video games. I'm going way back. It's nostalgia. You're going way back. And so in order to get the quarters and the dimes to buy the lemon heads, the Boston baked beans, all the candies, the ch <laughs> all of that, guess what? We had to make money. It was raking yards. It was shaking uh, pecans off the pecan tree after climbing on the roof. And it was digging up baits. So I really believe wow. it started there. And also my dad, he painted houses. He was a, a an entrepreneur. He did sheetrock. He was one of the best in the business in Waynesboro and beyond. And uh, I believe I got it from him and my aunt Charity. She owned a cleaners in Waynesboro, Keldrick uh, Sapp's mom. Yes. So it's in my blood. Now, if I were to fast forward, uh -huh. as you know, I went to college on a basketball scholarship. Right. I majored, dual majored in math and computer science. It sounds beautiful and lovely. I interned at Department of Energy, Savannah Riverside, three uh -huh. summers. And I got a co-op to Savannah Riverside and graduate school at Clemson in the computer science program. Beautiful. I should come out with a job, right? <laughs> Wrong. I was forced into entrepreneurship. Okay. I started tutoring students who were athletes who could not uh, get a high score on the SAT. So I started to tutor them and I started tutoring math and I would go to someone's house and drive. And I said, if I get four people that at $25, that's a hundred dollars. And you know, gas was like $7 for my little Honda Civic. <laughs> so it went a long way. It went so a long way. I started, you know, dabbling in it then. And I wanted to teach people. I had this mantra I got from someone else, some other philosopher, someone that says, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach him mm -hmm. how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to teach people how to do things, how to learn computers. And, and really, that's how the technology factory came to life. I wanted to teach computers. I love computers. I love technology. I fell in love with it in college. 
Um, and I started training people and teaching people how to use computers. And, and, and after that, teaching all that software, uh -huh. then I started doing things for them as well. So that's really the, the genesis of the entrepreneurship journey. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Fred, you, you took me back all over the place. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bo Weevil, the, yes. food, the food factory. Yes. Oh, oh it, like you said, that's so nostalgic. Oh, that yeah. is so, and, and those, this is one of those, those who know about those places, know about those places. Yes. Oh, man. So, mm -hmm. so you mentioned the technology factory, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I've, I've come to kind of understand how mm -hmm. it works, how it operates and such, but I, I, I want to know more. I want to hear more about it. Like in its current state, how is it, how is it structured? What, what's comprised of, of technology factory? Yeah, so number one, we have to kind of start with the st spelling T E K N O W L O G Y factory, technology yes. factory. Sure and I it's spelled that right. way because I have 10 years of experience in manufacturing. And when I worked in manufacturing, I worked in the factory. And I used to, first, I started at Samson, I was inspecting clothes during the summer. So okay. that was new for me. OK, but we expect to close all those Levi jeans. And if they had a hole, you you send them back. And if not, you got to reject and a recall. You had to stay after work and, and do it all over again. But then when I graduated college, I went to work for manufacturing and I was a computer programmer. And I fell in love, not with the programming oh. as much, but how things were created. If we wanted a widget, how many items were put into the widget? How was it created? And it was a system that did it, but a computer program ran it. So right. I worked in the factory 10 years as an IT professional, as a programmer, as a business analyst. I went to Italy on a global implementation to set up an, uh, a manufacturing system. Okay. Um, it was really cool. So I love the idea of coming up with an idea, uh, drawing up the blueprints. They did, the engineers. And then allowing the assembly team to build it. Then it goes through quality control and then it goes through selling it and sales, marketing, all of that. I love all of that. So that's uh -huh. my specialty. So when I thought about Technology Factory, I wanted to build knowledge. It was one byte, B-Y-T-E, like computer byte at a time. Right. But no one would get it nowadays. <laughs> so now it's one click because people like to click and learn. E yes. Learn. Yes. And so what's comprised of the, uh, the technology factory is learning and development. Number one, we train. Um, I've um, also in this current season have added HR because I have a human resources certification. Okay. And I find myself I've, I've had my certification since about 2009 and I find myself doing employee coaching. Uh, motivation, performance, management, improvement. So there's the IT umbrella, there's the human resources training umbrella and performance improvement. Uh -huh. And then people like me to do tactical things like, can you create a website for me? Or can you create mm -hmm. my courses? So I have a site called Course Design Agency. Mm -hmm. This allows people who want courses. Courses became really popular over the last few years. Everyone wants a course. They should want a course. It is very marketable and valuable. If you have knowledge, put it into a course and people can buy it. You can do a live course, an e-learning course, but I create those for people or I show Got them how it. to do it. Okay. And also with the course design agency, it's not just that. That's the catchy name. We do workshops. I develop PowerPoint presentations and help people if they want to develop their speaking skills. All of those things uh, allow them to learn how to d deliver virtual training. Like that's my specialty. I've been doing virtual training for over 15 years before okay. it got popular. So that's the that's that piece. And then one other piece is career coaching. I love career coaching. Yes, yes, yes. And um, I fell into this because I went through five layoffs and I just went through my fifth layoff. I've always been an entrepreneur and always worked because I had to be an entrepreneur because I was losing these jobs. <laughs> and <laughs> I like to let people know that you're gonna be tested in the area that you've been called to. Mm -hmm. I like working in corporate America, I love training, but when I was working in the IT field, it's very uh -huh. you know fluid. Uh, jobs were being you know moved from one city or one place to the next. IT people were being laid off. Mm -hmm. So I had to go keep reinventing myself. 
And that's why I developed the name Rebrand My Career, because I've been able to bounce back, rebound back so many times. I'm even writing a book about that, okay. about how um, I've rebounded in my career, the different stories around it. And so those are just the entities under Rebrand My uh, Technology Factory, Rebrand My C Career, Course mm -hmm. Design Agency, Virtual Training Coach, all of those things. <laughs> I have a lot. If you name it, I'm going to create a website <laughs> for it. Yes. You have to, uh, if, if people want to find Career Coach Freya, they're going to go to Rebrand My Career. Career. Then they're going to see what I have there. Mm -hmm. I developed my own career coaching app. I have a little video that yep. shows that, yes. but yes. more than anything, there's a form. So when you go there, just like when I go to your site, uh -huh. I can subscribe. And right. so once I have you in my sales funnel and I do create sales funnels <laughs> and marketing funnels, yes. uh, once I have you there, I can automate it. So it automatically sends you something. I've already done the pre-work. And once it sends you something, I may have it set up where in two weeks it may send you something else or it may send you something for five days. It doesn't matter as how you set it up because I'm not an right. octopus. I, I don't have multiple arms, but I can set up a system to right. allow people to reach out to me and it sends them something. And because we're busy people, we want to know how we can pre-qualify the people we want to work with. Uh, now, yes. Brother Chris, I like everybody, love everybody, want to work with everybody. But what I've learned on this entrepreneurship journey is that uh -huh. If I don't have a calendar and I don't control the timing, then Ooh. my day gets away. Yes. So I used to have my calendar wide open and people could say, oh, I want to meet with you on Saturday at two o'clock. Now, that's two o'clock. There's a lot going on on the weekend. So you're going to uh, work your schedule, your personal schedule around. Oh, I got to meet with a client at two. Then they come. They don't show up or they change mm. their mind. It is their prerogative. But my prerogative is I can control my calendar where I don't even have weekend meetings anymore because I okay. would be traveling. I would have to wait around and people change their mind. And they meant, well, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you're sorry. But guess what? I was traveling and I had to change my plans. Right. So entrepreneurs have to protect their space. We have to make sure that we dedicate your office hours. And if I had that little uh, meme from... Uh, the five heartbeats with Big Red saying, now, what are my office hours? It might have been big, it might have been five heartbeats or the temptations. I forget. Right, but right. what are my office hours? You want to make sure, entrepreneur, that you have office hours. And if it's two hours on a certain day, be faithful to that. But don't let your, because you need the money, don't let someone uh, hijack your schedule and not show up. So I just had to put right. that in there to help people out. Right. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm glad you touched on that. I, I just reintroduced my calendar a month or so ago mm -hmm. um i had taken it down they had been well i'd taken it down because my that what i'm doing now had been pretty dormant right yeah, yeah. Uh, for a, a, a small amount of time mm -hmm. but again to your point bringing that calendar back and having fixed times that i know i'm going to adhere to and like you said you hope the others on the opposite end are adhering and respecting, you know, your time. If I could just yeah, put, a, yes, please, put a pen please. in it. Uh -huh. Here's another way, pre-qualifying. I, I said the word, but I didn't go deep enough. Okay. You can also say, okay, if you're going to get my services, do a deposit. And you can put that and integrate that with PayPal or Stripe where they have to pay right. that. And if right. they don't show up, then it's just a courtesy fee for you. Mm -hmm. Hairdressers have started doing this. They don't play. They say, no, um, no, you got to pay a hundred dollar deposit or 200. Like oh, they're really? trying to get it see that. up. So okay. they, they are doing that. And so another one more piece to that is if you have a uh, certain prices of things and people say, well, how much do you charge? You know, the bartering days are over because people are buying what they want to buy. They're going on trips. They're doing this and that. So they have the money, put it up there and say, okay, this is what I offer and here are the prices. Are you able to handle that? Or will you have it in six months or a year? When will you have it? You can have that Good as point. a pre-qualifying question list and the people who are playing will leave the site. And I know it sounds bad, no. but I'm telling you, as no, you no, mature no. in entrepreneurship, as you mature in your time, you're going to learn to guard it. And you only want, you know how it says only serious inquiries only. Yes. That's what we're doing. And you're pre-qualifying people on your site. What has been one of the most memorable experience in, in the grand scheme of all of it? 
Um, I think um, I got a client from Egypt once oh, because wow. I put myself out there on a different platform and I couldn't believe it. But she wanted to have a course for students who needed resilience. Um, the students, the children in her uh, community, in her country were really blessed. Wow. And if they didn't get things that they wanted, they might quit or give up. And she wanted me to create a course around resilience. And I did. And that was really cool. Um, and also going into another lane. Remember, I told you I love computer technology. I love computer training. Absolutely. I did a lot of free training when I was uh, during COVID when people needed it uh -huh. um, because I wanted to help people get jobs. And people who were in the service industry, they didn't have the option of working remote like I did. And so I wanted to help change that. Um, so when I found the lane of creating and rebranding and doing the course development, uh -huh. that opened up another whole revenue stream for me. And then I got comfortable increasing the prices to what they should be because I saw other people um, doing that and they were charging so much more, but they weren't doing the tech integration. They weren't doing the websites. They weren't doing the courses, the workbooks. They weren't helping them improve their speaking. They weren't uh -huh. doing the sales funnel. And I was like, okay, you paid all of them. What? <laughs> And I'm charging this. And what it did for me was let me know that, okay, you are, you don't believe in your product enough. You don't believe that you're worth enough. And so I had to learn how to work on my pricing structure. And, and Chris, we got to help people with their pricing structure because uh, people are baking and cooking and they're only probably getting a 10% uh, ROI after they've bought everything. Right. And people have to make a living. They got to pay lights. They got to pay mortgage. We need to help people with their pricing and believe in it. So I help people with their sales pitch. So when they have their 60 second pitch, this is what I do. This is how I do it. When they come to the website, they should see everything you do how much it costs, the pictures and the graphics should be good, the wording should be good. Another program I have is called the Social Media Butterfly. <laughs> so it's a social media butterfly course. And I think that's .com, by the way. So anyway, Social Media <laughs> Butterfly helps people with, okay, you have a product or service. Let me show you how to package it, market it. And I literally say spread your wings and spread your message because I like to play with words. Ooh, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't like it. Actually, I love that. <laughs> love it. Mm -hmm. Dr. Huffman, what's, what's next? Years ago, I wanted something called the Certification Warehouse, and I think someone got the name. And let me put a pin on this one, too. I heard someone say at a HR conference here in Savannah last week was double-click that. But... Uh, putting a pin on it. Um, when you think of a name of a business or an idea, please, please, please go save the domain name. Yes. Go to go, go register.com. Yes. Um, you can go to GoDaddy's. Name Cheap is cheap. So I love Name Cheap. I've switched a lot of things over to Name Cheap. You can save it for 9 or $10, $5. And oh, I, oh, I never heard of that one. Yeah, name okay. cheap is great. I'm switching everything over. I've got okay. a lot of domains. I do domaining. It's a business. It's internet real estate. So I, make sure I, 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 I do it as well. But all of mine is via GoDaddy. But I'm taking yeah. notes on the, this other one. Right. But you know, GoDaddy's fine. What I'm learning is when it's time for me, when a client buys a site or uh -huh. yeah, a site name, um, and I have to switch it over and migrate it. Mm -hmm. Name cheap works really good for me. If I had to go research GoDaddy, I could probably figure that out too. So as right. long as it's cheap, just keep, yeah. make it cheap, save it, internet real estate, and someone may come and buy one day. If not, it's a you know it's part of your business. So you're That's writing right. off that you're paying that registration fee per year, that hosting mm -hmm. space per year. Um, but what's next? Um, really just want to do more authoring and speaking. Um, as you know, I work during the day, so I, I still like working. I like a check. <laughs> so for my <laughs> entrepreneurs who want to say, I just want to go all out. No, I'm going to say it like this. No, 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 no. <laughs> I need you to get your check. I need you to make sure you got some money. And I can live by faith. But I'm telling you, when I did it one time, I fell through the crack and almost lost it all. And that's being okay. real. 
So okay. I want people to be practical. Um, if you want to be an entrepreneur, work on getting your credit straight. Mm -hmm. Work on establishing your business credit. Go, yes. go get you a card or something from uh, uh, Office Depot, Staples, something like that, and pay mm -hmm. it off on time. And build up that business credit. Make sure you're right. trying to separate it. And then also um, work on um, putting some money to the side. Um, you know, a lot of times we have a hard time mm -hmm. trusting each other in terms of investment. Yes. Uh, but we need to think about that. Get get with another bank, um, uh, a diverse bank that might be more lenient to helping you. Uh, open up a secured account if you want to show that you're trustworthy. Um, I want people to um, know that they can start a business with nothing. You can open up a Shopify store for twenty nine dollars a month and get you some yes. merch and integrate it with Printful and you don't even have to carry inventory and you can be selling it. It, there's so many things that you can do. That's 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 the drop shipping aspect yeah. you mentioned to me a while back. Right. Yeah. Got to get a merch out there. Yep. And I train you on how to do that and how you can set up your 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 graphics to go on it. No inventory. We're in a world that you can have a business for less than a hundred dollars a month. Right. That's where we are right now. Right. And you want to have that in place. So when the layoff happens, like I just went through the last layoff and I'm making a story out of it um, in terms of writing my book, my mm -hmm. career coaching book. And um, diversity is also something big for me. So I love speaking on diversity topics and I have a full time role again in this area. So I have my own diversity curriculum working on my women on business certification. That's next. I'm just waiting. Yes. I'm waiting yes. for him to say you're ready. You know, okay. so they can give me my, I have my, my number that I can go into the system and apply for contracts, but I want that women own business with it That's so right. I can get ahead and veteran for you, veteran mm -hmm. for my husband, mm -hmm. veteran on minority, but they said the right. veterans are the ones that really get the contracts. They get ahead of everybody. I, I can argue that you know now you know that's <laughs> that that's my day to day. Stuff. I know, I know. So we'll, we'll, that's what I heard. We 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 we'll talk more about that. Uh, I, you were here a year ago. I'm going to get you back again, and I have some other business that I need to follow up with you. Mm -hmm. Need I need your assistance? I need to hire you, hire you <laughs> to help me with a little something. But we'll talk about that later. But I love so, what you're doing. I, so, I thank so, you for giving us space. Thank you for giving us the platform to come to. on and share. And I, I love the work you're got doing. To. It's very inspirational. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks, Freya. And to the audience, thanks for your continued support. Remember, this is where inspirational information is shared to help you write the life that you want to live. Awesome. Take care. We'll talk to you later.